Hi guys, it is time for another book haul. So this will be March's book haul. I don't plan to do this every month, but it seems to be happening regular right now, so we'll see. Um, yeah, so I haul all of my books from the thrift store and I spend between 25 cents to $3, I think. Oh, that one may be $4. So that is kind of the price range of all of these books. Um, usually in the dollar range. The Christmas Chronicles by Jeff Gwynn. Um, I don't have very many Christmas books, so I thought it might be fun to get this kind of a book where it's like the full, I don't know, set of Christmas Chronicles. Um, I don't know much about, I don't know anything actually about this story, but. I just thought it would be nice to add to my Christmas book collection. Alright, there's a lot here guys. I'm very excited to show you all of them. Uh, let's go ahead and continue on with my Tolkien collection. So the children of, I don't know if this is the Durin or if it's actually Hurin because there's Durin in The Hobbit, I think, no, in Lord of the Rings, doesn't matter. Um, I've got this one, this goes along with a different one that I've hauled in the past, so I'm very happy to add this to my Tolkien collection. And then of course, we've got um, this edition, um, The Lord of the Rings. This is the one volume edition, which is how Tolkien wrote The Lord of the Rings was to be one book, but um, somewhere along the line they split it into three for easier, easier to consume, I guess. Um, I also have this one. It's more of a movie edition, so I don't love it, but it goes well with my Tolkien collection, so you know couldn't pass that up, right? And then I finally found The Return of the King in this black edition. I have all of the other books in the set, plus the Silmarillion and the added tales or whatever. So this is the only one that I was waiting to find and I found it. So I'm happy to find that to complete the collection. All right, I have them sort of, like all of my books sort of, you know, organized, kind of. Let's jump into the Christian nonfiction. I've got a little stack here of that. So, You Are the Girl for the Job by Jess Connolly. This one was highly recommended by Oshina. And then as well, Chantel has recently read this one as well. So um, yeah, it was kind of nice to find this one at the thrift store. I got in Two Minds by Oz Guinness, The Dilemma of Doubt and How to Resolve It. I thought this would be pretty interesting to read because at some point in our Christian walk with Jesus, I think we all have our seasons of doubt. So it would really be nice to read this and see if I can um, glean from um, Oz's wisdom, I guess. Hopefully he has wisdom. I have never read anything by him, so. Then I've got A Simple Christianity by John MacArthur. I've never, oh man, I've never read anything by John MacArthur, and I know he's a well-loved Christian preacher, theologian. Um, there are some things that make me hesitant about John MacArthur, but uh, I'm willing to read this for sure. I've got Every Woman's Desire. This is from that series, The Every Man's uh, every man series so I have every I've read every woman's marriage and every woman's battle I have and I have and read both of those and so now um, I found every woman's desire and I didn't even know this one was a book so it'll be nice to read that one I found this one this one I'm pretty excited about because this is a study on 1st John. I am loved by Wendy Blight. Never heard of her, but when I, this is a study book, so um, whoever had it before me wrote their answers in, 
And I think that is so valuable to be able to see, to get some insight, even if I don't know this person, because I don't, but um, to, to see the insight that this person um, found through doing this Bible study. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to do this one. I found the 180 Christian, The Returning to Your First Love by Carter Conlon. Never heard of this book or this author, but willing to give it a try. You never know really until you try it yourself, right? I've got um, The God Catchers by Tommy Tenney. So this is um, written after he wrote The God Chasers, which was really popular. So yeah, I guess um, I'll try that one, but I would like to find The God Chasers as well. Then I found Growing Deep in the Christian Life by Charles Swindoll. I've never read anything by Charles Swindoll yet either, and I would really like to. So I found this one and had to snag it. And then the last for Christian nonfiction is The Greatest Book Ever Written by Fulton Ausler. The glorious pageant of the Old Testament reverently t retold in a manner of the greatest story ever told. Okay, so I, what I gather from this, correct me if I'm wrong, I love that it's like a vintage, oof, I love it. Red here, 60 cents, I just love it. Anyway, what I gather is that this is, is it kind of like the Message Bible, like where they reverbalize the Bible? Maybe? I don't know. Okay, so uh, let's do some random stuff. So I found these two. I'm always intrigued when I can get um, series at one time at the thrift store. Um, so this one is the Reliance and the Restitution by M. L. Tyndall. This is book two and three, so I have to find book one. But um, it's got like piratey vibes, and I'm here for that. So uh, yeah, kind of interested in that. And then, you guys, I can't believe that I found these at the thrift store. They were just sitting there, and they called to me, and I snagged them on up. So I found the entire trilogy of If I Run, by Terry Blackstock. I read this in summertime and it was pretty good. I really liked the first one. Um, but yeah, I'm excited that I found these and they were a dollar a piece, so like score. So that is fun. Ooh, I knew that the covers made a picture, but I didn't realize that the spines also made a picture. That's cool. I like it when publishers are creative with their book covers. I got this big guy. Um, this is a fairly new one and it's one that I've been interested in reading anyway. And when I saw it at the thrift store, this one was I believe $3 because of the hardback. But um, yeah, Wonder Woman by Lee Bardugo. I tried reading Six of Crows a couple of years ago. Couldn't get into it. Um, but I really like the Wonder Woman TV, I mean, movie that has been coming out, like the first and second one that came out. Um, so. I'm interested to read some novelization of that. Okay, so yeah, literally the rest of these are fairly random. So, To Whisper Her Name by Tamara Alexander. This, I think most of these were from the one day when there was just like a ton of new stock at this one thrift store. So all of these are a dollar. Um, yeah, To Whisper Her Name by Tamara Alexander. Uh, I did read a little bit of the backs when I like I read a little bit of the back when I, before I buy them. So obviously there was something in the back that caught my eye. Um, but also Tamara Alexander is someone I've never read from before. So that's always intriguing as well. And I know all of these, not, not the Wonder Woman, but I think, um, I think the rest of these are all Christian fiction. So um, then I've got Tomorrow We Die by Sean Grady no idea. And then Rooms by James L. Rubart. I've heard of this author because I have a few, I think I have some of his books on my shelf downstairs maybe. But this one, the cover looks super intriguing. Um, what would you find if you walked into the rooms of your soul? 
one man is about to find out. Huh, this one might go on my TBR shortly. Sounds good. All right, Secrets of Harmony Grove by Mindy Starnes Clark. Um, what secrets lurk deep inside Harmony Grove? It's bed and breakfast. She finds her ex-boyfriend dead and the manager of a B&B &B unconscious. Yep. Yeah. I'm here for that. We've got Beloved Castaway. Again, islandy theme, pirate theme, ocean theme, ships, whatever. I am easily convinced to try it out. So, um, yeah, I guess there's that one. Also someone I've never read from before. And then Faraday Road by Ace Collins. Um, a Lie Evans mystery. A quiet evening ends in murder on a muddy mountain road. Like, like I say, I don't know anything about these. <laughs> this one I picked up because I have the one of Liz Curtis Haig's other books in this series. I recognize the, the style of the cover. So this one is Fair is the Rose. Um, so yeah, basically the only reason I picked this one up was because I knew I had already had one. It's called Whence, Come, Whence Came a Prince. That's what it is. Um, so I have another one from the series. All right, and then we've got Warrior by Brian Davis. If you remember my last haul, I hauled a different one by Brian Davis, but from the same series. So yeah, if I can continue on a series, I'm gonna grab it. And then I've got, oh yeah, this is another one. Uh, Book of Days by James L. Rubart. Best-selling author of Rooms, which is right there. Uh, God's Book of Days, a record of the past, present, and future of every soul. Some say it's a fable, others are sure it's real, hidden somewhere on earth. If Cameron can't find it, he will lose everything. Huh. Very intrigued. Um, then we've got Nightingale by Susan May Warren. I know that um, a lot of the booktubers that I follow, a lot of the Christian booktubers that I follow here um, on YouTube like Susan May Warren. So I saw this one and I thought I would give it a try. Then I've got House of Dark Shadows by Robert Liparulo. Um, this one I have, I think it's book three, book two or three of this series. I hauled it in my last haul and this one is book one. So yeah, like I say, I don't really need that much convincing to buy a book when it's at the thrift store, as you can tell. <laughs> but this one, so stoked. Last time I hauled, um, the Bone House by Stephen Lawhead from his Bright Empires series and this is the first book in the series and I'm so excited that I found it at the thrift store. So now I have three out of the five so I'm gonna have my eye open for the other two but I'm very very excited to have that in my collection. This one I bought for nostalgic reasons because I absolutely remember this cover from when I was a teenager. Um, I think this is, yeah, this is a series. So this is book one by Gilbert Morris. Um, I don't know if it's book one that I read as a teenager, but this cover. So I obviously read at least one of them from the series and it was probably book one. So I'm excited to read this to see if it, um, you know, makes me think of my teenage years at all. Um, I found Fault Lines by Thomas Locke. I have a couple by Thomas Locke. I haven't read them yet, but um, I kind of really like this cover too. But yeah, what if reality is only the edge of possibility? Maybe science fiction? We shall see. Okay, I found a few Ted Decker books. So I found Infidel and Chosen. This is from the Lost Book series. And I think, is this called the Circle series because yeah, book one, book two, because they all start with the letter of the word circle. 
I don't know. I've heard about the Circle series. I don't know if this is it because it says the Lost Books. So is this the Lost Book series? I don't know. You guys let me know. And then I found Red and Light by Ted Decker. So this is book two and book three from his color series. Oh, this is the Circle series. Oh, why would this series spell, like, because you can see all the books in this series and it spells circle. So why would that spell circle? If this is the circle series, I'm confused. Oh well. Um, yeah, so uh, I think these are very, very, very popular. I've never read them before, but I've been enjoying Ted Decker lately, so. Speaking of Ted Decker, I also found these two. I found Adam and the Sanctuary. So uh, I actually haven't even heard of these two before, but. I'm looking forward to adding them to my Ted Decker collection, I guess. Okay, so I also found um, Espresso Tales, the new 44 Scotland Street novel by Alexander McCall Smith. This one I got because um, <clears throat> it's Alexander McCall Smith and he is the best-selling author of the number one ladies detective agency, which I have been recommended by Chantel. So, yeah, when I saw his name, I thought I would add it. I don't believe this is part of that series, but I could be wrong. I don't know. And then I've got um, Avalon by Stephen Lawhead. I haven't heard of this book before, uh, but it's Stephen Lawhead, so of course I'm going to pick it up. I found... I'm, it's kind of funny because... So I found the memory book by Penelope Stokes. This book is book three in a series, and I have on two separate occasions hauled book one and two, um, but each book, like books one, two, and three, are all in different formats, sort of, not format, but like one is paperback, one is hardcover, and this one's in like a small hardcover, so they don't match, but I have all of them, and I've never heard of them, but I really like the covers, so I'm hoping that they're good. All right. Um, then we've got Airframe by Michael Crichton. I really liked Jurassic Park minus the language, so I wanted to give some of his other works a try. So I've got that one. And then I found, guys, oh, this book is like, <laughs> like four pounds. Like it is heavy, that really vintage heavy paper. I don't know what, what the difference is between vintage paper and modern paper, but this is so heavy. Anyway, it's the portable Shakespeare, seven favorite plays. Um, and yeah, it's just like so old and I absolutely love it. Love me a good old book, guys, you know that. And then I've got Forward, Forward the Foundation. This is the breathtaking conclusion to the greatest science fiction epic of all time by Isaac Asimov. I don't know how many books are in this series by Isaac Asimov, um, but this is the conclusion, I guess. I have the first one, so now I have the last one. I don't like to do it, but I'm gonna have to like stack them on top, so yeah. Um, let's go with these ones. These ones are the more middle grade kind of vibes. I saw this one, Under the Sea Impressions, and of course this cover speaks to me because it's oceany and it's also like more vintage. This is something that I can picture when I was a kid being a thing. Um, so yeah, 1985, I wasn't born yet, but you know, same idea. Uh, but yeah, this is like short stories and poetry. Um, for kids and I'm really excited to read this one and since I saw this one at the thrift store I saw it again at a different thrift store so like I'm wondering if that was like required reading for kids back in the 90s so I got Wildwood this one was the most expensive book this one was the four dollar book I believe yeah Wildwood by Colin Malloy Oh, there's illustrations in here and everything. Are there? Where? I, yeah, I think I've heard of this one on booktube quite a bit, so I love the cover. Well, I guess we'll just have to see if it's any good. 
I've got The Forgotten Girl by India Hill Brown. Do you know what it feels like to be forgotten? On a cold winter night, Iris and her best friend Daniel sneak into the woods to play in the snow. There, Iris makes a perfect snow angel, only to uncover the crumbling gravestones of a young girl named Avery Moore. I'm there for that. That sounds good. Uh, the Curiosity House, The Shrunken Head. This one just, yeah, honestly, it was probably a cover by, but it looks cute. Um, this one, I saw The Search for Wandala by Tony Ditcherlisi, Ditcherlisi, and I was like, wait a second, that sounds familiar, Wandala. So I looked onto my Goodreads, and sure enough, it was in my TBR shelf. So I was like, well, obviously at some point, I had heard about this book, and I thought it would be interesting to try. So, picked it up. Uh, the next one is Artemis Fowl, The Atlantis Complex. I would like to collect all of the Artemis Fowl books, but only in this edition. And I think this is more of a, a newer style or, or a newer edition. So I don't think I'm going to be finding it um, very frequently at thrift stores, but found this one. So that can go with my, the first Artemis Fowl book that I have. Speaking of Artemis Fowl, I found this one. This is the ultimate guide to the series. So Artemis Fowl Files. So I'm thinking this is just like bonus material for the series. I'm not really sure, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious to read that one. Then I got East by Edith Patel, Patu. This one, also like Wandla, I was like, ooh, that looks familiar. And then sure enough, it was on my TBR um, shelf on Goodreads. So I picked this one up. I think this is um, a retelling of some, is it Russian folklore? But anyway, I've, I've heard of this one on booktube. And then we've got uh, the Deadly Curse of Tokel Ray by Frank Peretti. This is part of the Cooper Kids Adventure Series Book 6. And a while back I had hauled, I think, the first three in the series. So I'm going to be missing four and five. I think, I think I had just hauled the first three. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, now I've got Book 6 to add to that. And then I've got My Side of the Mountain by Jean Craighead George. Uh, she also wrote the Julie of the Wolves, which I read in school, um, and I have on my shelf. And this one, My Side of the Mountain, something about the title sounds familiar. Like maybe I also read this one. I don't know. So give that a try at some point to see if I have in fact read that before as a kid. Then I've got Dick Tracy. And the reason why I bought this one is because when I was a kid, we had like the very original Nintendo system. And one of the games that we had, we had like, I don't know, like three games maybe. And one of the games we had was Dick Tracy. And the, the design of like the little cartridge or whatever is exactly like this. And I thought this would be like perfect to read in May for my childhood reads because it's so connected to my childhood. I never read it, but I played the game. So yeah, I'm excited to read that one. And then I've got Tales from the Secret Annex by Anne Franks. So, um, oh, by Anne Frank. I read her, like the diary of Anne Frank um, in school. And so yeah, this is like some bonus material that she wrote. So I thought it would be good to have that to go with my Dyer Van Frank. I've got A Dog Called Kitty by Bill Wallace. I feel like this is ringing some childhood bells for me as well. So that's why I picked that one up. And then Streams to the River, River to the Sea. This one's by Scott O'Dell who wrote Island of the Blue Dolphins, which I really enjoyed in school. And I reread it again a year or two ago. And I also enjoyed it. So um, because it's the same author, I'm gonna give this one a try. Okay, got a few more left, guys. We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This is one that I have heard on booktube for quite a while and I've been curious to read it, so finally got my hands on this. Um, this is 
not the edition I would have chosen, um, this like art style or whatever, but um, I'm, I'm in it for the story, not the cover for this one. Sometimes I'm in it for the cover. <laughs> anyway, um, got The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. He wrote War of the Worlds. So yeah, I'm interested to read that one. Then I've got The Book of Merlin by T.H. White, and he wrote The Sword and the Stone, The Once and Future King, which um, I really enjoyed. I think I read that one last year. I need to get my hands on that one. Oh, I like this uh, design on the inner cover. But anyway, uh, I think this is like my third book called Merlin, which is funny because my brother-in-law's name is Merlin, so <laughs> that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I got it because of the connection to the Sword and the Stone. And it's a vintage copy. Of course I'm gonna go for that. I found one Corpse Too Many, A Medieval Who Done It by Ellis Peters. A medieval who done it. Like, have you even heard of anything that sounds that cool? So I had to pick it up and I'm very interested to get to it. So uh, the next one is Out of the Silent Planet by C.S. Lewis. I am collecting this series. I don't remember what it's called. Is it the Out of the Silent Planet series? I don't remember. But this one is in really rough shape, but it is, uh, vintage so I'm gonna just glue that in and then yeah excited to get to that series the next three I'm a little unsure of they are these three from the Dune collection this one is by Frank Herbert uh, God Emperor of Dune this one um, yeah is part of the original series and this one I think is like maybe written these ones are written by his son or something um, and it's kind of like a spin-off series, but on the same planet of Dune, so uh, same thing. But uh, yeah, I'm a little hesitant because I'm not sure if I'm going to be continuing this series or not. So they might go in my book sale this spring that I'm having for fundraising money for cystic fibrosis. So um, we will see where these ones end up. And then you guys check out what I found at the thrift store, like a dollar a piece. Actually, and then they're a dollar a piece plus when you buy four you get the fifth one free so like less than a dollar a piece like what all of this Sanderson and there was more like duplicates of these and ones that I already had like whatever that is such a score I can't even I just can't even I can't even like guys look at that so stoked I do have this one already, but it's in like a really big hardback, so this will be better to have in um, mass market paperback. So very excited to have all of these, uh, and also I'm hoping I really like Brendan Sanderson. <laughs> so there it is. There is March's book haul. It's a little crazy, but that's about all I'm doing these days is thrifting. So. <laughs> What are you gonna do? Uh, yeah, so let me know if you guys have read any of these, if you're excited about any of them. If you, yeah, just let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are and let me know um, if you've been thrifting books lately or if you've been ordering maybe full price books, I don't know. Um, let me know what your most exciting recent purchase has been in terms of a book. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, they're not in the right order. <laughs> the if I run, there's a fly in the house. Forward.